Hello and welcome back to another series of RDF's How Do You Play Like. This time we are going to try and recreate Alex Ferguson's 442 from the 1999 season when he famously won the treble. But will it be a success with us? We'll find out. Please leave your recommendations in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment if you like what you see. In 1986, a Scottish manager named Alex Ferguson took over Manchester United's football club and ended up being the longest serving manager in Man United's history. This run started in 1986 and it ended in 2013. Over this period, he won over 30 trophies. That includes 13 Premier League trophies, 5 FA Cups and 2 Champions Leagues. When Alex Ferguson first took over Man United, he struggled to find any consistency. But then in the 89-90 season, he finally managed to win a cup, the FA Cup, and this was the beginning of a great career for Alex Ferguson. He won many trophies, but the highlight of his career came during the 98-99 season when he won the treble. He was the English Premier League champion, the FA Cup champion, and the European champion. Years after years after years, Alex Ferguson managed to find a winning solution for Man United. But it's the 4-4-2 tactic that he used in the 98-99 season when he won the treble. Alex Ferguson's teams were always pretty skillful, but what he did rely on heavily was the teamwork from his players and the work rate. This above all was the most important for Alex Ferguson. Alex Ferguson's very attacking and direct football was a success for him and for Man United and it was the attacking football that brought him so much success. He even claimed himself that he's never played for a draw in his life. Just like many great tacticians, Ferguson had more than one system. All the systems are pretty much the same, but depending on who he's playing, he can either go just a little more cautious or a little more attacking. So what I've got for you is three different systems, one that I played for most of the games, one that I used against the tougher oppositions, so against the likes of Liverpool, Manchester City, Arsenal, Chelsea, and I've also got a system the 442 diamond and this system will be used mainly to grab goals when you're behind in games. Both systems rely on very attacking and direct football. When we have possession we have the flexibility to turn into a 4-4-1-1 with the right pressing forward here which would have been Dwight York coming deep to collect the ball also forcing the opposition defenders to get dragged out of position. Many teams in this era did use the 4-4-2 as well but it was how Fergie used his that made it very difficult for others. His teams did press all over the field but while pressing he did have more cautious players making sure they retained their shape. In his system he had a mix of very speedy players alongside creative players and players that are just willing to work hard for the 90 minutes. He was also very defensively compact there was hardly any space between the line of the defenders and the midfielders. The players and the roles in this system are very well balanced. While you have one attacking fullback, you will have another on support. And while you have one winger on attack, you will have another on support. So, let's get into some instructions and some player roles duties. First, we're gonna start off with the mentality. The mentality is set to attacking. This is to get the urgent and more direct football, get the ball to the front players as quick as possible. I will start with out of possession. I've gone with a higher defense line alongside a lower line of engagement. The reason why I did this, because Alex Ferguson never had any space between his center mids and his defense. The way to achieve this is to have the defense line and the line of engagement pretty close to each other so there's no gaps in the middle. You see, if I move this up to standard, you see the midfield line step up a little bit. But as I've got two centre mids on support and not one on defensive, I want that gap to be shortened. 
so I've gone with the lower line of engagement. The defensive width is set to standard. This gives us the flexibility of our full backs to go either inside into the centre backs or come out to close down the winger. If I set this on narrow, automatically the whole defence line will become narrow and this may allow wingers to have time on the ball. I've gone with tighter marking and get stuck in because I feel that Alex Ferguson's teams were pretty aggressive. I've also gone with extremely urgent closing down. This is to match the team mentality and close down in an urgent fashion. In transition, I've gone with counter press. As soon as the opposition breaks my line of engagement, we will counter press, we'll get our players out to the opposition as soon as possible. And then as soon as we win that, we will counter. We will focus getting our attacking players on the move and this will allow us to play the direct pass into players. Goalkeeper distribution, are distributing it quickly. I feel that's what Peter Schmeichel did. He didn't dally around with the ball. He had the ball and he distributed it quickly to get the team on the front foot as soon as possible. In possession, I've gone with attacking width on wide. This is to stretch the pitch, make it look big and also get our attacking players into space. Approach play, we are going to pass it into space. I notice I can get the left winger who's on attack in the game more. Also, the striker that's on attack, they become more alive and more involved in the game with this instruction on. I've also gone with overlap on the right because I feel Gary Neville was the more attacking fullback. He was getting forward, getting around David Beckham who was on the right-hand side. While David Beckham came inside, Gary Neville went on the outside. I've gone for work ball into the box. This is mainly for the strikers. I feel Dwight York and Andrew Cole had a very good partnership and very good link-up play. And to try and replicate this, I've gone to work ball into box to try and get my strikers closer to each other around the box and play nice little football. For the second 4-4-2, which will be for the tougher opponents, it's basically the same, but the line of engagement has gone up to standard. The reason why I did this is because the better teams are more likely to play out from the back and play good football and have a lot of possession. We don't want them to have that much possession because that can hurt us. So now we're actually going to push up a little bit but with the centre mid on the defend duty to fill that gap between the defence line and the centre midfielders. I've also shortened the attacking width to fairly wide. This is to add a little caution to the account counter-attack. If this is set to wide and we lose the ball while our players are positioned wider, this may create gaps for the opposition to run into and counter us. Apart from that, it's the same as the first 4-4-2 with just a little more caution. And for the third tactic, if you're down in the game or you're drawing and you feel you should be winning the match, you can switch to this formation. The moment I can think of on top of my head, I was 1-0 down against Man City and then in the 70th minute, I switched to this, the game ended 1-1. It comes with the same instructions as the second 4-4-2. And now for the player roles. The goalkeeper, I've gone for sweeper keeper. This is just so he's more aggressive in his distribution. As soon as he gets the ball, I've instructed him to distribute it quickly. For the centre-back pairing, I've just gone for the normal two centre-backs. Yep, for Man United was more of a stopper, but I believe that was more his personnel than Alex Ferguson's tactics. So, just a little example of what I'm trying to say. Though I have the role on centre-back, if I was to play Harry Maguire, due to his player traits, due to his personnel, he will be acting more like a ball-playing defender. For the right-back, I've gone for the Gary Neville style, the full-back on the attack. He was the more attacking full-back, getting down the flank, down the byline. David Beckham as the right mid didn't always bring the ball down to the byline, so Gary Neville was always there in support. I've got into partial uh, and take fewer risks. I noticed that both my fullbacks kept playing the ball long. I've got cross from the byline, like I said, he was the overlapping defender getting down the byline. And I also got tighter marking, is because I believe Alex Ferguson did not like opposition wingers having too much time on the ball to get the cross into the box. And for the left back, which used to be Dennis Irwin, he used to be pretty similar to an inverted fullback. Though he was playing left back, he was naturally a right footed player. So sometimes he would come inside with the ball. So I've tried to replicate that. Due to him being a more cautious fullback, I've got him to sit narrower when we're in possession I've got him to hold position and I also got cross from deep as the left mid will be the one crossing down the byline for the left center mid role this is more the pool skulls so I've got him roaming from position trying to find pockets to play get further forward and take more risk he's only on the central midfield role but the reason why I didn't set him to playmaker because I don't think he was a driving force in Man United's team I don't think the focus was getting him on the ball specifically he also had influence in both attack and defend but I feel he wasn't 
wasn't as energetic as the box to box midfielder. For the right hand side of midfield, again, it's the centre midfielder. Roy King, more midfield general. Though he did like winning tackles, he wasn't afraid to get forward either. And you will notice this during Man United's Champions League run. He wasn't as creative as Paul Scholes, so I've got him taking fewer risks and I got him passing it shorter just to keep possession better in that midfield. On the right hand side, we're going to try and replicate David Beckham. For me, he was a wide playmaker. The reason why I didn't choose wide playmaker is because of this. It automatically has crossed less often. David Beckham crossed more often than usual. Using a wide playmaker will take away from the crossing ability from the right mid. So what I have done is use wide midfielder to create my own wide playmaker. So I've got the same instructions as the wide playmaker would, but instead of crossing less often, we're crossing more often. For the left hand side, it was the winger, Ryan Giggs. It was pretty much just a standard left winger. We didn't need to add any more instructions to this role. For the right hand side of the strike force, we'll be trying replicating Dwight York. I felt he was more of a deep lying forward, having an influence between the midfield and the striker. He could thread passes out wide into the striker, but also scored chances himself. The reason why I didn't use deep line forward, for me, it just didn't work. And I feel the pressing forward gives me a more accurate player movement. I've got him moving into channels to stretch the opposition's defence. And for the Andy Cole role, I'm going to use Poulter. I could use advanced forward, but for me, I feel that advanced forward had too much influence on the football. Your players would be looking to send direct passes into his movements. Using the Poulter, it meant that he was less involved in the football and he was occupying the opposition defence. For the second 4-4-2, it's the same player roles. With the right centre mid, it will be on defend. And for the 4-4-2 diamond, the post goals type player, in the AM position, more defensive midfielder, you put them in the DM position. Now I'm going to show you my selected best 11. I will try and use this throughout the season as long as my players are fit and free from suspension. At times I will be rotating of course to save some condition, to save some match fitness, but for most of the league games, this will be the way that I line up. In goal, I have De Gea acting as Peter Schmeich. Right back is Juan Pesaka. Left back is Luke Shaw. I feel Brandon Williams will be more accurate to what we're aiming for, to replicate Dennis Irwin coming in on his right foot, but Shaw is more developed. My two centre-back parents is Lindelof and Tuan Zabi. Tuan Zabi or Tuan Zabi, I don't know. The reason why I left the expensive signing Harry Maguire out, he's fairly slow, the slow acceleration and the poor agility. I'm not a fan of his mobility. I feel Lindelof can read the game very well with his anticipation. And Tuan Zabi is a very physical player. He's got good height, good pace, good positioning and he can only get better. For the right hand side, to replicate David Beckham, I've gone with Bruno Fernandes. I know some of you must be thinking, you are crazy. Bruno Fernandes is the right mid. He's the best centre mid there. Believe me. Bruno Fernandes is probably the best that can replicate David Beckham. He has the crossing ability, the first touch, the passing technique, the vision, the decisions to make the pass, the composure. He's literally perfect for this role. He tries to kill a ball often. Perfect. He can shoot from distance and he plays 1-2, so he'll be dictating the tempo. Like I said, it should be wide playmaker and this is perfect on the left hand side we have david james of course probably the only natural winger in the side at the moment and what makes it even better he's welsh just like ryan Giggs. there's two center mid pairings for the roy Keane. i've gone with scott matomine he's the closest you would get to roy Keane in this man united squad the ball winner hard worker with great teamwork and then Paul Pogba will be trying to replicate the Skulls role. Up top, we've got Martial and Rashford. Martial, the more deeper player, with Rashford being the poacher. So that's the team that I've gone with. It's pretty strong. I feel I've got the correct players, and I feel this team should be able to do well. Welcome to the results part of this video and as you can see the season ended very well We won the league with 96 points I do want to start putting these saves out for download for anybody that wants to download them So let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea or you think I should just leave the saves for the videos But I am willing to give out the saves to people as you can see I won the league here Marcus Rashford with 28 goals Highest average rated player was Paul Pogba most assists with 16 assists is Paul Pogba 
Pogba. Best pass completion was Fred with 89%. Marcus Rashford with the most man of the match awards with 10 of them. Most yellow cards was Pogba and most red cards was Scott McTominay aka Roy Keane. As you can see here I was very very close to winning the treble, very close. We won the league, we won the Europa Cup but we lost in the final of the FA Cup to Liverpool out of all teams, so frustrating. And in the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the third round to Swansea. So let's go for the team stats. Average possession, we're not there. We're not near the top, but that's okay because we're not a possession-based team. Yellow cards were up there in second place because, like I said, not a single player in that team was afraid to put in a hard tackle. Goals, Manchester City's on top. We are second with 84. We're joint sixth with Man City. I think we could have scored more with the quality of crosses in our team, but... I didn't have a routine set up, but chances created 141, we created the most chances, but shots on target were second behind Liverpool, dribbles per game were seventh, but really it's only Ryan Giggs as the dribbler in this team, so we wouldn't be up there. 19 goals conceded. What an excellent season defensively playing this type of football with a 4-4-2. Goals conceded from corners, zero. Yes, zero. Yes, zero. We conceded no goals from corners. Clean sheets, Man United up there with 25. 25 clean sheets out of 38 games, excellent. We made the most fouls, a high number of tackles won, and we only conceded two penalties all season. Let's check some player stats now. Aaron Wan-Bissaka and De Gea won the most games in the, during the season, so obviously they were very key players. Most man of the match awards Rashford in the league with 10 of them. Wan-Bissaka covering the most distance to Gary Neville, the right back going up and down that flank. Distance covered per game, Daniel James. As you can see, and like I told you earlier, we rely on work rate and teamwork. This is key to the side. Highest average player was Pogba. Rashford is in that list. Bruno Fernandes, guys, the right mid. Rashford with 25 goals in the Premier League. Rashford behind Sergio Aguero with the goals per minute ratio. Rashford with the most shots on target. He missed so many chances, so many golden opportunities. And as you can see, his conversion rate is only 17%. Assist, look at that. Pogba and Fernandes in the top three. Key passes, Paul Pogba, Scott McTominay, surprisingly, Pogba created the most chances, which was the Pulse goals, and then it was Martial, which who replicated the White York, so that is very pleasing results to know that. The pressing forward did work, he did create chances. Like I said, sometimes you just have to find the right system. Just because we believe he played the deep line forward in real life, it doesn't mean that it's going to work exactly in the game. In the game, you may have to compromise and just find the correct role. If it's not the exact role you're looking for, you can always tweak the role. And then for the goalkeeper, De Gea least conceded and De Gea with the most clean sheets. Let's just check some squad stats. We've got Rashford who scored 28 from 45. Martial who scored 27 from 42. So that is a deadly strike force. That's over 50 goals between the two strikers, Dwight York and Andy Cole. So I've got the mix between them perfectly. Daniel James and Ryan Giggs with 17. These stats towards the end of the season have similarities to the real life ones. And then for the assist, there's no surprise. The Pulse Ghost type and the David Beckham type of players with the highest assists. We started very well winning the first five games, including a 1-0 away victory over Man City. I was very happy. Straight after that, we lost our first game to Liverpool. Then we got back on a winning run and then there's the game against Swansea I was telling you about. But then we went away to Chelsea and we lost 2-1. So there's an indication for away games, maybe the 4-4-2 might have been too much sometimes. Maybe I could have dragged the striker back down to, to make a more natural 4-4-1. One, one. But then again, we went on a very good run again. The first knockout round for the Europa League gave us a heart attack. Losing 2-0 away in the first leg. I thought that was it. I thought the whole point in the save was gone. But then the second leg, we came back 5-0. Borussia Dortmund, that was very, that was a very comfortable round, which I thought was going to be way more difficult than it was, but it wasn't. Then we played Atletico Madrid in the next round. Again, I thought it was going to be more difficult than it was. Maybe in Europe, the 4-4-2 is actually a very, very positive tactic. Here you can see I had Arsenal and then Man City. We beat both of them very comfortably, including a 5-1 victory at home to Manchester City. Very pleasing. Then we had Benfica in the semi-final. We drew 1-1 at home, but then we went away and we won. And then on the very last game, we lost 2-1 at home to Liverpool, which wasn't a good sign because in the very next game, I had them in the FA Cup final. Guess what, lads? We lost 2-1 again. And then in the Europa final, I felt we had a good chance and I was right to have that feeling. We smashed Roma 4-1.
And that's it for the video guys until next time don't forget to leave your recommendations in the comments Please like subscribe and comment. Thank you to all of those leaving very positive comments in the comment section Thank you to those who are leaving feedback constructive criticism is always welcome If you think I've got something wrong, then tell me we can talk about it. This is a tactical discussion. Thank you guys. Peace